Chapter 24 As George flew through space, he just managed to hold on to Eric's hand. Eric hauled him onto the rock, sitting him down beside him. Behind them, the doorway back into Eric's library vanished. George, are you crazy? If I hadn't caught your hand, you could have been lost in space forever, said Eric, sounding furious all over again. But, said George, silence. I'm sending you back now. No, shouted George. Listen to me. This is really important. What is it? said Eric, suddenly aware that there was something very wrong in George's voice. What is it, George? You have to come back with me, babbled George. I'm really, really sorry, and it's all my fault, but I told my teacher from school about Cosmos. I told Dr. Reaper, and then he sent you the letter about the planet. Before Eric could say anything, George rushed, rushed on. And this morning he asked me if you disappeared. He did. It's true. It's a trick, Eric. He's out to get you. Greeper? Reaper? I see, said Eric. So the letter is from Graham. He found me again. Graham? asked George, astonished. Yes, Graham Reaper, Eric replied calmly. We used to call him Grim. You know him? George gasped with the shock underneath his space helmet. Yes, I do. A long, long time ago, we used to work together, but we had an argument that led to an awful accident. Reaper got very badly burned, and after that, he went off on his own. We stopped him being a member of the Order in the end because we were so worried about what he might do. But do you know what he sent me in that letter? Yeah, said George, remembering how Eric left without saying goodbye. Just another planet. Just another planet? George, you must be joking. The planet Graham told me about is one where humans could live. I've been looking for such a place for ages, and there it is, pointing toward where two little dots in front of him, one big and bright, the other small and less bright, Eric added. It's right there. The big bright dot there is a star, and the smaller dot is the planet we're heading for. It doesn't actually shine on its own, it just reflects the light of its star, like the moon reflects the light of the sun at night. But Greeper is horrible, objected George, who really couldn't understand why Eric and Cosmos always had to be in lecturing mode in times of danger. We would never have given you the coordinates of that planet just like that. There must be a trick. Oh, come on, George, said Eric. You know that I can get Cosmos to open up the portal to take us home again any time I want. You're quite safe. It's true that your teacher and I had our differences in the past, but I expect he's decided to put it behind him and join in the efforts we're making to explore and understand the universe. And I have installed new antennas on our helmets. We can now communicate with Cosmos even if they get damaged. Why didn't you ask Cosmos to just send you, to send you there directly? Let's do just that. Let's get back to your library. Ah, said Eric. We can't do that. Cosmos doesn't know what lies ahead of us, and that's my job to go where computers cannot. After I've been somewhere new, then we can use Cosmos to go there again, like you just did to find me here. But the first trip I always need to do myself. Are you sure it's safe? asked George. Positive, said Eric confidently. George and Eric fell silent for a few moments, and George started to feel a bit better. He managed to stop thinking about Greeper and looked around to him to see where he was. In all his eagerness to warn Eric, he had quite forgotten he was on a rock in outer space. To be fair to Eric, everything around them seemed calm. They could see clearly in all directions, and the star with its planet was growing bigger and bigger as their rock approached it. But then something started to go wrong with the path of the rock. Just as George's comet had changed direction when it flew past the giant planets and the Earth, their rock seemed to be switching course. But this time there didn't seem to be any planets around them. 
the rock was now heading in a completely different direction away from the distant planet eric so much wanted to see what's going on george asked eric i'm not sure replied eric look around and let me know if you see any place in the sky where there is no star and cosmos opened the portal just in case cosmos didn't seem to have heard eric's request since no portal appeared nearby george and eric looked in the direction the rock was heading everywhere all around them were stars except for an area on their right where there was a small patch of sky containing no stars which was becoming larger and larger all the time over there george said to eric pointing toward the growing dark patch the stars around it were moving in a very strange way, as if space itself was being distorted by it. Oh, no, shouted Eric. Cosmos, open the portal now, now. But no portal appeared. What is it? asked George, who was becoming scared. The dark area now covered more than half the space they were looking at, and all the stars they could see outside it were moving erratically, even though they were far behind it cosmos shouted eric once more trying cosmos replied in a very faint voice but nothing happened george's mind was starting to spin in front of them the dark area was becoming enormous all the space around george and eric was warped and some dark patches started to appear to their left and right george could no longer tell up from down or right from left all he knew for sure was that the dark patch was getting bigger and bigger from all sides, as if it wanted to eat them up. Cosmos! Hurry! Eric yelled. A very faint doorway started to appear in front of them. Eric grabbed George by the belt of his spacesuit and threw him toward it. As he flew through, George saw Eric trying to reach it too. He was shouting something, but his voice was distorted and it was hard to make sense of it. Just before landing on Eric's library floor, just before the portal door shut and the view of outer space disappeared, George saw the dark patch engulf Eric entirely. It was only then that he understood what Eric had been saying. Find my new book, Eric had shouted. Find my book on black holes.